house is now open and uh, here's our first customer. <laughs> Come on with me, we'll go inside and I'll give you a tour through the haunted houses. Hello everybody, this is Todd, and I told you we were going to go to a cool place. We are in that cool place. This is massive. This is where Halloween begins and keeps on going. This is Morse Costumes, and they ship everywhere, worldwide. Your independent Halloween stores, your party cities your Halloween express everywhere so let me take out a little tour so if you've ever seen Indiana Jones in the ending part of Raiders of the Lost Ark yeah this is it this is the Raiders of the Lost Ark Halloween store Halloween warehouse of goodness look at these aisles look at these boxes it goes on and on and on and up and up everything everything Halloween is here that you can possibly imagine look at those pallets yes folks if you want to see where it starts it's here ready to go and it is only not even June yet here's your Ruby's costumes here Rubies, rubies, rubies. They're all categorized. Look at that. Yeah, man. You're in Halloween heaven here at Morris Costumes Distribution Center. Check all that out. It just, and here is their packing area here, ready to go out. The cool thing about Morris in this warehouse is that you, say if you want to order one thing, one item you don't have to buy things in bulk see if you just wanted one mask one costume morse provides that for you so when you see stuff on magazines and advertisements yes you can order a single air blown inflator snowman well apparently congratulations at all you seem to have survived this far, anyway. The doctor will be so pleased. He's waiting for you in this laboratory, you know. Why don't you take the shortcut through the fireplace? Watch out for ghosts, though. <laughs> so, we are in a cool part of the building. We're going to go over here into Morris's graphics department. Check out some of the cool vintage masks and friend of mine's incredible artwork that he's done for years and years you'll be amazed let's go on inside Okay, so we're going inside the graphics arts department. Check Alien out. Those are awesome. Check all this out here. The Frankensteins. And my good friend, Jim hey, Lawrence. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Now, I'm in a museum. What it feels like anyway. <laughs> Years of accumulation of incredible movie props, masks, creatures, from just every genre, every movie I think we've grown up with. We've seen a and lot. We've seen, seen a lot. lot. Yeah. And I've known you over 30 years, which is crazy. Right. 
right. This is amazing. Come on in. Oh, wow. We'll, uh, we'll start over here. Um, listen, I've been into this ever since I was a kid, and that's been a long time ago. Right. And uh, this is just a reflection of my interest, and it's just stuff I've accumulated over that, over that period of time. Right. Uh, working here at Morris, uh, it's uh, given me the opportunity to know a lot of people and to meet a lot of people. Probably wouldn't have had a chance to if it hadn't been for that. But I've got a picture up here of Rick Baker. Uh, he's a seven or eight time Academy Award winner. Um, Dick Smith, the uh, grandfather of modern day makeup, is the guy who set up that meeting. I don't really know Rick, but he wow. set the meeting up and Phil and I, uh, Phil Morris and I, were able to go over and visit with him. It's a picture up here, Passion of the Christ. We carry a line of uh, makeup products from Tinsley Tattoo, Tattoos, and uh, Christian Tinsley was Ben Caviezel's makeup artist in Passion of the Christ. We should and get so, around there. Yeah, sure, sure. And, that's uh, amazing. That, uh, that's really something. The makeup on that is just uh, phenomenal. And we go on around. I mean, there's a, I'm a big Alien fan. And so as you go through the collection, there's a whole bunch of Alien type items. Uh, over in the corner, over here on the other side, you'll see a lot of H.R. Giger's uh, uh, work that he did for the movie. And um, I'm a big, big fan of his. And uh, uh, Alien, you know, when that came out, I was just in uh, early 20s. And I decided that painting, I wanted to kind of paint like that. And I kind of started uh, picking up the airbrush because I found out that Giger was, you know, what he, most of his paintings were done by airbrush. And so it was like I wanted to, to do some of that. Right. And so all the pieces that you see here that are three-dimensional, with the exception of a few, but 95% but of them, I have painted all of these. A lot of the stuff that you see on the walls are just things that I've collected over the years that are autographed by the makeup artist or the special effects people. Um, I've got Stan Winston's autograph over there. He's a multi uh, uh, Academy Award winner. Uh, Steve Wang, just to give you for instance this photo over yeah, here. Yeah, Steve's amazing too. Of me and Steve oh, Wang. Yeah. Well, Steve Wang is the guy who created the Predator for the first Predator movie, him and Matt Rose. Um, I've got uh, Bob Burns. Bob Burns has one of the biggest collections of alien merchandise there is. That's me and him. And there's Steve and Don Post. Um, wow. It just kind of goes on and on. Um, I've got uh, the guys from ADI who did uh, who did Alien, Alien Resurrection. Uh, uh, Veronica Cartwright was in the first Alien movie. Pan's Labyrinth. Oh yeah. Uh, it just um, and you get Godzilla. Yeah. Godzilla. You got to have a Godzilla. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Wow. Uh, the well, guys who do The Walking Dead from. Uh, from ADI, Greg Nicotero, he does a lot of the directing now, him and uh, Howard Berger. Oh, yeah. I got to meet them at one of the, uh, one one of the, of the shows. shows. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Zack Schneider, I've got an autograph over here. Zack Schneider, he directed the Superman. And he just came out with that extended version. The extended version, yep. exactly. Exactly, which is pretty incredible. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. I don't do a whole lot of sculpting, but this piece here that you're zooming on, this was mm -hmm. one of my first sculpts. Uh, I was a big fan of Fire in the Sky, and so that That's was beautiful. kind of my inspiration behind uh, behind that piece. Look at the, the just the veins and the well, accentuation. And I don't know how close it is to the movie, but well, uh, it was it was as close as I could make it anyway. I can tell you, it's just to me, it's just amazing. <laughs> Appreciate and that. you have the clown here too. Oh, appreciate it. oh yeah, yeah. The creepy clown. Now, uh, was that from anything? No, not, not really. But it's just a piece that uh, that I collected and then I just modified. Uh, the mouth was closed. I opened that up and kind right. of took and made kind of a Joker smile and uh, uh, just painted it and made it just as evil as I could make it. Oh wow! Now, this is this a resin kit here? That's a or what uh, was that? it's a McFarland sculpt of the original pumpkin head that they came out with. Um, this is a, a, a piece I got from a collector and uh, it was just the piece itself and then I went and sculpted the base and the pumpkins and all the stuff that you see through here. I'm a big fan of that creature. I think that uh, it comes down to about three big movies for me, Alien, Pumpkinhead, and Predator. Those, uh, those are the movies that you know have inspired me. And. Um, you just don't get much better than those. those no, movies. definitely not. Now, 
ectoskeletal. Mm -hmm. Now, that this was a variation cool. on the seal species creature that Giger, uh, that Giger created. I don't think that they use this particular one, but the artist who sculpted that, I was able to get a pull from him. And uh, wow. it's, it's a wicked looking piece. These are, these are awesome too. Yeah, Excellent. that's a piece by Steve Wang. And uh, it, back in the day, Steve just, uh, he did sculpts for people to, uh, to paint, you know, just in the garage kit industry. Wow. And that's one of the ones that he did. Uh, I've got uh, several things over here. I've got uh, Mars Attacks piece here. This is a pull from the resin casting that they used in the movie for CGI. Wow. And so... Um, I got this piece and it was a very static pose and right. so I uh, cut the arms off and repositioned a little bit into the into this right here. Uh, Beautiful. We've got Rain of Fire, that's a pull from the uh, from the mold. Steve Wang, uh, him and Miles Tevis sculpted that piece and uh, wow. one of the best dragons I think I've ever seen. Definitely. That is amazing, the detail. The teeth are crazy. Isn't that something? Um, Shallow water. This is a piece that Sandy Calora did, uh, just kind of a short film, and I was really taken with the creature that he uh, created, and um, I picked that up from him at one of the uh, one of the conventions. Man, and you got Mr. Nixon here as a vampire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we uh, we came up with a line of political masks. <laughs> That's awesome. we, we got our uh, our sculptors to sculpt them to be monsters, and That's so great. Nixon ended up being a being a vampire. So I uh, took wow. that one and just custom painted it. That's a beautiful piece. Mario right Chiodo uh, sculpted this piece out in California and was able to give me a uh, just a foam filled copy out of the original mold. So it's a little bit larger than the production pieces, but uh, yeah, yeah, I really like the way that one turned that out. That turned out great. Yeah, yeah. The this uh, photo you see here, Jordy Shell is here, oh, yeah. and Casey Love is over here, and those are probably two of the best sculptors yeah, out in are. California right now. They're just incredible. There's another one down here. I, did, I didn't even have room on the wall. This guy is T. Takea. He is uh, just uh, uh, his work. I can walk you down here and show okay. you some of his work. This All is right. his work here, the alien, and this piece here came from Takea. Wow. And you just, uh, you, I hope you guys can see the detail because you That's do amazing. not get any better mm -mm. on detail work than, uh, than Takea. And I just happened to be at a show and uh, he was there. They didn't even bill him as being at the show. I walk around the corner and there's the guy and I've always wanted to meet him. And it just worked out. They must be bring you joy to work around your work and other people's work. All day long. I, um, I I often comment to people that if you had an office like this, it sure wouldn't work if you sold washers and dryers. No. For a living. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, working at a uh, a Halloween uh, you know distributor like I do at Morris, uh, this kind of fits. It's amazing. Yeah. I remember seeing it years ago, and I was still every time I walked through your office, <laughs> I was like just awestruck every time, just inspired too, because oh, yeah. I want to be creative. When I saw this. I, uh, Walking by it every every morning. I have uh, I just uh, ever since I was you know six years old. I don't know wow. what it was about monsters that I, I just liked, but uh, you know and I've That's kept so... it through my entire life. The interest has always been there. If, if I uh, if I didn't have this interest, I don't know exactly what I would be doing. But uh, this is kind of all consuming to me. Definitely. Yeah, darkness. darkness. Tim Curry yeah, from Tim Legend. Curry. Um, that was an amazing costume in itself. Oh, listen, Ridley Scott. It yeah. Was, uh, wow. It was directed so well. And to me, him and Meg Mucklebones were two of the best creatures probably ever created for film. And Meg, was, Meg Mucklebones was a guy. Yes. That's yeah, the cool thing. In fact, Robert, uh, yeah. Robert Picardo. There he is. Yep. He, uh, he was the guy in There's the, uh, the makeup. Yeah, there he is. And, you know, he went on to be on Star, Star Trek, Trek. And, yep. and that kind of thing. But for me... He'll always be Meg Muckle. There's Meg. Right there. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. This is awesome. Wow, just so much history here. Uh, listen, I, uh, it's amazing to think this much time has gone by. Big time. Sure don't wait on anybody. <laughs> well, Jim.
appreciate the time with you today. Oh, listen, it's been my pleasure. You don't mind if we walk around a little bit more? We're going to see some other cool stuff. You can just walk around and take pictures and do whatever you'd like to do. That's awesome. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. Vintage posters, Terrors of the Unknown, Harlem, Athens, Georgia, and wow, look at these, the mad Dr. Morse in the Dungeon of Death, these are so cool, you get some of the, a lot of the celebrities over time, 
that they've worked with, both in costumes and makeup. Check these out. A lot of the magicians, of course. Some well-known faces. They're Dolly, Johnny, Mac Davis, Kenny Rogers, Eddie Rabbit. So yeah, a lot of the celebrities chose more supplied a lot of costume and prop stuff for them back in the day. Especially for the magicians would always come visit Phil over the years. Yeah, these are some more of these classic posters. Check these out. These are awesome. Some of the stage shows, circus shows that uh, Moore supplied all the props and costumes for over the years. These are just history. This is all history, folks. Check that out. The Madhouse of Mystery. Ghosts and Ghouls. Just, I mean, there's like cool, you can just walk through here and check out all these classic posters. Check this out. Jordan Thrill Circus. Check that out with the superheroes. You might remember some of these. Of course, Ring Brothers and Barnum Bailey. Yeah, more supplied a lot of the costumes and props for them as well over the years. Yeah, check these out. More posters to feast your eyes on. Toby Tyler Circus. Ronald McDonald Circus. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. These are amazing. I gotta check all those out. Ringling Brothers old vintage posters get this old ghoul guy up here yeah more of Bigfoot <laughs> It's closing time. I'm happy I got some cool shots. This is, uh, this is a whole different section over here, folks. This is not even where I showed you earlier. This is the other side of the warehouse. We film a cool horror movie here right now. This is phenomenal. A little dark. Yeah. And again, they supply stuff for amusement parks, theme parks. Yeah. The list is on and on and on of what they supply. So, yeah. But, yeah, this is Halloween headquarters. This is where it all comes from. Three massive warehouses of goodness. Halloween goodness. Costumes. Masks. Props. Animatronics. Yeah. All through Morris costumes. I thought I'd share this with you. 
so you can see where it all comes from. Check that out. I mean, it's just amazing. And I worked here back in the 80s, and it was not even nearly this big. But now it has grown into an empire of haunts all through here. I remember the bins here, too. When I was a puller for them, they'll be like mash, and you get the order for them, you run around. That's what you all do. You do all day long is pull the orders, ship them out. You have your cart, throw them in your cart, bring them to shipping, and they would go out to their destination anywhere, pretty much, on the planet. Yeah. You could spend hours upon hours in this warehouse just seeing all the goodness, Halloween goodness, costumes, just boxes of all themed costumes. Yeah, these are all costumes. Tons of them. They go out, they come in, they go out, they come in. Just keep on selling and selling for your parties, for your seasons, your Halloween, Christmas, Easter, St. Patrick's Day, spooky over here yeah so this is amazing stuff all year long is Halloween here at Morris Costumes so it's approximately three football fields in length and in width so I'm kind of doing a panorama here kind of give you an idea how big this building is it is huge I hope you enjoy that tour of Morse Costumes, the center of Halloween as far as props, costumes, masks, you name it, they've got it. Pretty much every for every season, they've got for Easter, Christmas, uh, St. Patty's Day, everything. So, yeah, this place, of course, gets busy around Halloween. So look for your Halloween Express stores. That is the main Morse Costume stores that are out there. They have all your needs for Halloween for sure so but I appreciate you guys joining me on this quick little visit to Morris costumes and seeing these wonderful props and and the collection of Jim Lawrence and his work it's amazing he was an incredible airbrush artist and the collection he has is amazing so please like subscribe and uh, leave a comment hope you enjoyed it you guys take care stay tuned for more stuff coming up really really soon take care bye bye the use of large inflatables and stage props spaced around your midway gives your audience the, the feel of, well, that the attraction is much larger than it actually is. And any kind of a prop can be used. For example, over there is an old lift truck. I mean an old-fashioned lift truck. But we've used it to good advantage, as you can see. In fact, one of our members of our skeleton crew is inside driving. Here are some circus props that we borrowed from the costume shop. So anything can be used with just a little imagination.